All right, guys, I've got a Schumacher battery charger here in front of me that a customer brought in, and uh, right now it's not charging. Uh, we're gonna see if we can fix it. So come along and let's do this together. All right, so what I've got here is a six amp and two amp dual rate battery charger. It can do six volts at six amps, or it can do 12 volts at two amps, or 12 volts at six amps. All right, so this is plugged in right now, but as you can see, not getting any voltage from it. This is a manual charger, so theoretically, well, there should always be power coming out of these two leads. I should be able to touch these two leads together and see sparks, but I got nothing. So that tells me something is not working inside. A good thing to check, um, and I find this to be the problem on many guider chargers, especially manual ones, pull back the sleeve where the wire is and just make sure that this wire is connected well there. If there's any kind of crimp here, or if you pull on this and you can feel that there's a loose spot, that could very well be your problem, that the wire is corroded right back in here, and you just need to cut this back an inch, and then probably solder this in, or you, know, you could maybe unfold these bends, bent uh, metal and, and press it back in there, but I prefer to solder it to make sure it stays. So the red positive side looks good. Negative side also looks good, and I don't feel any mushy pieces in here. And you know, this looks clean, there's no corrosion in there, so that's another sign that's probably not the issue in this case. You'll notice that I'm doing my best to keep these apart just in case while we're working things start to work. Uh, I don't want them to be hanging loose and dangling and touching into each other. Obviously, though. I will unplug this before I dig into it to try to repair it. All right, it's plugged in right now. It's on the six volt, six amp setting, and you can't hear the transformer much, but when I switch it to 12 volt, two amp, you should be able to hear it a little bit. It's a very slight hum. Now I'm gonna take it to six amp, see if you can hear it. Hear that hum? That's the transformer inside. But we're still not getting anything here so all right we are unplugged that's key now let's open this up okay at this point i usually like to quickly look over things here and then uh, I'll often plug it back in to see uh, where the power fail is um, I unplug it at this point because as I'm taking the screws out and lifting this off I don't want to actually contact something hit a loose wire get shot short some out that sort of thing so now before I plug it in I'm gonna look over it you know honestly This is the problem, it's right here. Okay, I actually don't know what this does or what this is. <clears throat> All right, I feel like there's not too much to look at here. But what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've uh, flexed this up and I've soldered some solder onto there. And now I'm going to try to solder this onto that almost looks like they used solder before so i'm gonna try with solder and see what we got so i got some flux on here and um let me see if i can touch this Nothing. All right, guys, let me catch you up to speed here. As you can see, we've got this all put back together. And here's what it took and how we did it. So 
what I had to do was wire brush this surface so it was nice and clean and, and smooth. And then I was able to solder using a larger tip on my soldering iron that carried more heat. Um, and I took it off the old spot here and I put it on a new spot there where it's clean. The solder would not take to this old spot. I suppose it's, there's, it's just too dirty there, even though I tried to clean it off. So it took very well to this new spot, just moved it a little to the side. Same with this one. You can see this dark spot is the old spot, but both of these are on here nice and tight. I'm not worried about them going anywhere. And even if they did, now we know how to get it back on there. Two things I learned on this project, and then two things I learned that I don't understand as well. Um, first, this is called a heat sink, this metal shield here, metal plate, I mean. Um, and what it does is help dissipate the heat so this does not, the whole box does not get too hot um, while AC current is being turned into DC and it's moving around through the charger. Second thing I learned is these two black cylinders are called diodes. They allow the current in here to only travel this direction away for the tra transformer, All right? So for example, if we unplug this from AC current, but it was still hooked up to a battery and let's say current was attempting to flow back to the transformer, it cannot get past these diodes. They are one directional, so the current can flow through here, but it can't get in here, all right? Why that is important, I don't fully understand yet. That's okay. We're still learning. Uh, two things that I realize I don't fully understand. I touched the tip of the iceberg on this project. A full wave and half wave rectification and the role that diodes play in that. Um, also, um, I learned this is a center tap transformer. I'm not sure what that means and what other kinds of transformers there are. Um, but I did learn there's probably more going on here with the windings than I realized. This is all with the help of a good friend who has a lot of experience in this field. So I have a lot to learn, but we did learn a lot on this project. And I'm happy to say this is put back together and works great.